In 2019, you helped us create a healthier, more compassionate world. Together, we put prevention first, promoted healthful diets, and tackled ethical issues in research and medicine. Animal testing will come to an end at the Environmental Protection Agency due to our two decades of tireless work. From Chicago to China and Delaware to Delhi, we helped communities around the world thrive with a plant-based diet. We ended animal use in eight more medical training programs. We teamed up with doctors and celebrities to fight breast cancer with an innovative four-pronged approach. Our groundbreaking clinical research is giving new hope to people struggling with health problems. We're working with Michigan lawmakers to end deadly experiments and get dogs out of labs. We petitioned the FDA to require a breast cancer warning label on cheese. No more bacon double cheeseburgers in the cardiac unit. We pushed hospitals to go fast food free. We worked to move Alzheimer's research away from ineffective animal models. Millions of listeners tuned in to the Exam Room podcast for motivation and inspiration. We sued the USDA for refusing to protect consumers from fecal contamination of chicken and other meat. We helped hundreds of thousands of people take animals off the menu with a 21-day vegan kickstart. We trained scientists on how to transition away from animal research. We're at the American College of Physicians, publishers of the Annals of Internal Medicine. We were the voice of authority against a dangerous industry attempt to exonerate red and processed meat. Why? Because they're not telling you the truth. We educated doctors about the importance of nutrition for patient health. We brought cutting edge pharmaceutical technology to Capitol Hill and urged Congress to move away from animal studies for drug development. The Barnard Medical Center continued to revolutionize patient care with exciting new programs. We launched a campaign to end animal use in general surgery residency programs. Our doctors rallied the public to ditch deadly processed meat and break up with bacon. Break up with bacon! Break up with bacon! Break up with bacon! Thank you for helping us power our important work forward, making the world a better place for people and for animals. Welcome everyone to a talk with Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. The Physicians Committee combines the clout and expertise of more than 12,000 physicians with the dedicated actions of more than 175,000 members across the United States and around the world. It is a pioneering organization in propagating the health benefits of plant-based diet. And it also works in the area of policy uh, changes and influencing the rules around laboratory animal testing, apart from many other things. We are joined today by Dr. Vanita Rahman and Dr. Zishan Ali. Dr. Vanita Rahman is an internal medicine physician, nutritionist, and personal trainer. She currently practices medicine at the Barnard Medical Center, where she leads weight loss research and provides primary care with a special emphasis on nutrition and lifestyle. She is also a clinical instructor in medicine at the George Washington University School of Medicine. She has authored several books on plant-based nutrition and published articles in peer-reviewed medical journals. In her free time, she enjoys traveling, hiking, and spending time with family and friends. Welcome, Dr. Vanita. Thank you. Dr. Zishan Ali is a program specialist at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine in Washington, D.C. Dr. Ali is working with the Physicians Committee since 2012. He manages the medical student outreach program in the US and India. He also reaches out to physicians, healthcare professionals, and researchers at medical and scientific conferences to collaborate and spread awareness on chronic diseases prevention through plant-based nutrition. Dr. Ali heads the 21 Day Kickstart India program and travels to India to provide educational lectures for healthcare professionals and public. This conversation is being held by Just Be. Just Be Resto Cafe, based in Sadashivnagar, Bangalore, is India's first oil-free whole food plant-based eatery 
It came to life in 2017, about a year after Nidhi Nahata, who is a food therapist and Econ and Insurance certified health coach, experienced a tremendous boost to her and her family's health when she adopted the whole food plant-based lifestyle in her home. Just be serves delicious and healthy vegan food exactly the way nature has intended us to eat. Just be wellness offers health coaching for everyone so that they can be their best including those looking to prevent and reverse lifestyle diseases like heart disease, type 2 diabetes and hypertension. We also have regular health talks by experts from the field of health and nutrition, events, weight loss programs, monthly cooking classes and sound healing. And that brings us to the conversation for which we are very excited. Welcome both of you. Thank you. So Dr. Vanita, we would like to hear from you about the work you do. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this is such an important um, opportunity for us to talk about the role of nutrition and lifestyle and chronic disease. And this is what we do at the Physicians Committee. We advocate for a healthy diet because we know that it plays a huge role in the management of chronic disease in the prevention of chronic disease. And now as we face this COVID-19 pandemic, we know it's never been more important to get those chronic diseases under control. Um, and that's what we do at the Barnard Medical Center where we see patients and at the Physicians Committee where we lead nutrition related programs and uh, research. So would you like to talk about plant-based nutrition in a little more detail for our audience? Yeah, I'm happy to. Um, actually, I'd like to share a little bit of information about um, lifestyle and nutrition in the management of chronic disease and how that plays into COVID. So let me share my screen with everybody. Can everyone see that okay? Yes. Yes, okay, great. So let's talk about lifestyle and chronic disease. First, what are we talking about here? Let's, let's really see how all of these things are tied together. So diet and lifestyle play a key role in um, weight management, in our blood pressure, in our blood sugar levels, and how um, whether we have normal blood sugar levels or prediabetes or diabetes, or if we have diabetes, how well it's controlled. Li diet and lifestyle play a key role in our cholesterol levels, and also in other chronic respiratory diseases like asthma and COPD, not just smoking, but also the food we eat can impact that. And then all of these in turn, we know, we've known this for a long time, are risk factors for chronic cardiovascular disease like heart disease or stroke. But what's really interesting in this COVID-19 pandemic is that we're learning these are also risk factors we're developing a severe infection when we do contract uh, the coronavirus. We're much more likely to have more severe infection. The rate of death is higher when we have these comorbidities. So diet and lifestyle have always been important, but what this pandemic is showing us that is it's not only important in cr chronic disease management, but it can also impact how we fare with acute infection. So why, what are we talking about here? Let me just break this down for you all. This here is a muscle cell, this big blue cell, and these little pink dots are glucose molecules. They are trying to get into our cell. And in order for them to enter, we need a key, and that key is called insulin. Insulin will bind to these receptors, which will then open up these gates through which glucose can enter. And so here we see insulin is doing its job, it's opening the gates and the glucose is entering the cell. But our diet plays a key role in this because of these things right here. Do you see these yellow globules? These are little fat globules that are in our cells. So when we eat a high fat meal, like pakoras or samosas or puris or baturas um, or chicken or red meat or seafood or eggs or cheese. These are really high fat foods and the fat from those meals enters our cells right here. And these fat molecules prevent 
insulin from doing its job. So we've eaten a meal that's high in fat, our glucose is rising, our pancreas is producing insulin saying, okay, let's get that glucose in, except the fat from the meal is preventing insulin from doing its job. So the pancreas produces more insulin and more insulin, but it doesn't matter. The fat prevents insulin from doing its job and the insulin stays outside instead of going in. And this causes our blood sugar levels to high, uh, to rise. And this is the beginning of diabetes. This is what we call insulin resistance. And with time, things get worse and blood sugar levels are now in what we classify as diabetes. So we actually in medicine have a name for these fat globules. They're called intramyocellular lipid. A, a mouthful, intra means within, myo means muscle cell, and lipid means fat, so fat within the uh, muscle cell. So this is the problem in diabetes. I know people often worry if it's the fruits or the grains, they try to avoid, uh, especially in India, we hear people avoiding mangoes or guavas or lychees because they think the sugar from that will increase their blood sugar, but it's not the sugar, it's the fat. So we've really got to be mindful of those high fat animal foods, as well as oils in plant-based foods. Uh, another uh, thing that we have to consider when we talk about the COVID-19 pandemic is our lifestyle and exercise is very important. So this is actually exciting research that was done at um, my alma mater at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. And what this research team found is that exercise can boost your immunity. And this is how it works. So every day, even as we're sitting here and conversing, we have these unstable oxygen molecules in our bodies. They're called free radicals. And because they're unstable, they try to become stable. And the way they do that is at the expense of our healthy body cells and they try to steal uh, uh, electrons from our healthy body cells. And as they do that, they cause damage to those cells. And but we have something that can neutralize them. It's a fancy word, it's called superoxide dismutase. It can neutralize these free radicals, which is great because free radicals cause what's known as oxidative stress in the body. That's a word for the damage they cause. And what is the damage that they cause? They play a role in high blood pressure, in heart attacks, in congestive heart failure, chronic respiratory disease, sepsis, ARDS, which we're seeing commonly in COVID-19. It stands for acute respiratory distress syndrome, where the lungs fill up with fluids and they don't work. And then just multi-organ dysfunction. And there are many types of these superoxide dismutases um, in our body. But one of them is called extracellular superoxide dismu dismutase, or ECSOD for short. This is produced by our skeletal muscle. And when we exercise, the amount of this uh, neutralizer increases, and that helps by um, the damage caused by free radicals. So let me show you, here's exercise. It's boosting our levels of extracellular SOD. And that in turn will neutralize the damage caused by these free radicals. So it reduces the risk for arthritis, hypertension, lung disease, kidney disease, diabetic retinopathy. And this is all very exciting because, um, you know, researchers are working on therapeutics to increase the levels of this, but we can do it naturally just by exercising more. And unfortunately, um, we are exercising less in this pandemic. So let me talk for a minute about acute respiratory distress syndrome. We hear about this so much in COVID-19 because the majority of the deaths are occurring due to pulmonary complications. Um, and ARDS can be caused by different infections or conditions. And in COVID-19, it affects about three to 17% of all patients who have COVID-19. And ARDS is quite serious. Our lungs uh, fill up with fluid. We can't exchange oxygen or carbon dioxide. There's a high mortality rate, about 40% in those who develop it. And at least in the US, we know it's responsible for over 75,000 deaths, ARDS. It, this is including COVID-19 and other conditions that cause it. And if we exercise regularly, we increase the levels of this neutralizing ES, ECSOD, and then this prevents and reduces the severity of ARDS. So really important. 
something as simple as exercise can have a huge impact. All right, so how much should we be exercising? Uh, well, you know, for most adults, the recommendations are to do about 150 to 300 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes to 150 minutes of vigorous aerobic exercise like running or jogging, swimming, biking. And then this is the one people often forget two strength training sessions. Strength training means weightlifting or doing Pilates, something where we're increasing the amount that each muscle is lifting. And in the US, only 23% of Americans are meeting their aerobic and strength training guidelines. And about half of us are meeting the aerobic exercise guidelines. So really important that we eat a healthy diet, exercise regularly so that we can boost our immunity, reduce these chronic conditions, which will in turn reduce our risk for severe infection with COVID-19. And also all those long-term conditions that are still there like cardiovascular disease. And unfortunately, people are exercising less during COVID-19. Exercise has decreased by 32%. On the other hand, the amount of time we're spending on screens and devices has increased. And even a few weeks of reduced activity or inactivity decreases how well we can take up oxygen and, uh, or our blood volume, our muscle strength. And once we stop exercising, it can take about six weeks to regain the muscle strength where we were before. So the, the impact is pretty quick and profound and it's really important to keep moving even during these times. And besides COVID-19, exercise has tremendous health benefit. It reduces mortality, reduces the risk of dementia, our mood, blood pressure, and all those other comorbidities that are risk factors for COVID-19 reduces the risk of cancer, improves balance and stability. And a big one here for India and much of the world, diabetes, cholesterol levels, and it improves our bone health. So a slew of benefits. And, you know, one of the things people are concerned about right now is social distancing, not exposing themselves, but we can still do a lot to get regular exercise. Uh, we can walk, hike, jog or bike play badminton outside, handball, these are all great options that don't require much contact. Inside, we can practice yoga or Pilates, just dance to your favorite tunes or Tai Chi, and then just housework, gardening, cleaning, these are all great simple exercises that do have a profound impact. All right, let me stop sharing my screen with you with that. So it looks like it's time people get their bikes, their sports equipment, their running sneakers out and, you know, start moving. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of the silver linings in all of, one of the few silver linings in all of this is that the amount of pollution has gone down significantly in India. So, you know, normally we worry about air quality being outside, but with lower levels of pollution, it's never been a better time to be outside and get some fresh air and much needed exercise. That's true. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vanita, for that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zishan, uh, you're the program coordinator for PCRM in India. Would you like to talk about PCRM's work, uh, both in India and abroad? Of course, of course. Uh, first of all, thank you for having us uh, in this program. It's good, it's good to see you and uh, we were a uh, few months back, we were in India at Jazabi Cafe. Uh, the food was so amazing and uh, the way you presented it, that was, we still remember that. So it was a great time in India and we did an event together at Shangri-La event. It was, uh, it, it was so lovely to see you again and uh, talk to your, uh, uh, to your followers and those who know Jazabi Cafe. Yeah, so uh, what I can do is I have this presentation uh, I gave uh, at Shangri-La Hotel, which, uh, which details about our dietary patterns in India and, and how uh, eating a plant-based diet can even reverse those conditions. So we are seeing at Bernard Medical Center that we have reversed chronic diseases 
and take off all the medications from patients just by helping them change their diet. So I can talk a little bit about from the Indian side, how things are happening in India and what happened in the last 20, 30 years. And then we can talk about uh, our work in India. So let me share my, my presentation here with you. So uh, here you can see that this is a chart which, which shows about uh, the, some newspaper headings about diabetes in India. And I, I, don't, I don't think we need an introduction here that how India has become the diabetic capital of the world. And currently we, are, we have over 70 million people who have diabetes and millions more with whose diabetes have either not been diagnosed or they are pre-diabetic. So these are very disturbing trends. And the same trends we are seeing uh, for hypertension and for heart disease. So these are mostly chronic diseases. And you will be surprised to know that 61% of the deaths in India in 2017 were attributed to non-communicable diseases. So this is alarming and why this is happening. So um, I would like to show you a slide where it shows uh, about the, the, the dietary changes in India. So the, and let me get back to, let me go to that slide here. So this, this uh, chart shows the annual per capita food consumption by different income classes in India between 1983 and 2000. And you can see the consumption of core cereals like millet and jowar and bajra, how, how much it has de decreased in both the income groups. On the left side, you can see here it shows the bottom income group and the upper income group. And you can see that in 1983, this was 37% uh, and then in 2000, it was 11.9%. So that is 70% decrease in core sales. And you can also see that there is an increase in the consumption of edible oils, meat, fish and eggs, and not so much for sugar, but definitely animal products, the consumption of animal products have increased and the consumption of core cereals have decreased. And we are seeing that because India is in a, in a phase where we are transitioning into our, the per capita income growth is rising. And the research shows and the trends show that even in China, in the last 20 years, those countries where the per capita income has increased, 30% uh, communicable diseases have also uh, increased. No, sorry, no, let me correct that. 30% increase in the consumption of animal products have increased. That means every time there is a rise in income of people in any country, the people start eating animal products. And this is the reason why we are seeing disturbing trends in all the developing countries. Now, uh, I would like to show you some, some stats on the milk production in India. If you compare what happened in the last 20, 20 years in India, between 2000 and 2017, our milk production has doubled from 80 million tons to over 160 million tons. And then if, if you can see the world versus India per capita consumption of milk, you can see that the per person of, uh, per capita consumption of milk in India is higher as compared to the average consumption around the world. So we are consuming a diet which is very high in dairy and also I would say in, in, in animal based products. Most of the people think that India is a vegetarian society but over 60 to 65 percent of people in India eat meat too. So if you can see the chicken production which is again a, something which has, uh, is very easy to buy in India the way our economy and the infrastructure is designed is very easy. Even in small shops in neighborhoods, it is very easy to buy chicken. 
and every nick and corner you will see the fast food outlets uh, where they are selling fried chicken just on the roadside too so many people uh, are eating chicken and you can see here that the broiler meat production in million tons which have tripled over the last 17 years and i would like to highlight that the chicken production and the milk production which has increased by triple or by double our diabetic population has also doubled in this period from i would say from 30 35 uh, million people with now 70 million people in just a period of uh, 20 30 years while our population has not increased it has, it has not doubled our population in the year 2000 was around 1 1 billion and now it's 1.3 billion so that shows that there is something definitely going wrong with our diet. And um, uh, this, this, uh, this chart shows that we are westernizing our diet by following what Americans are eating. And this is the message we are bringing to India that we are seeing uh, that the research shows that every time uh, there is the people, the people in America are now realizing that fast food is not good for them but in India it has become a trend it is the food for the middle and rich class while in America these fast food outlets is the food for the poor people so when this is happening you can see how these uh, uh, these chains of McDonald's Domino's KFC and Pizza Hut have increased in India over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. And again, if you see the 2020 uh, stats, I'm sure they have, uh, they have increased even more. So when this is happening, the diabetes prevalence in India, which was two to 3% prior to 1980, is now 20 to even more because in 2015 it was 22 to 25 percent it's just because the way we are eating and, and as Vanita has mentioned we we also have a very sedentary lifestyle and you all will agree with me that we are not an, an Indian um, society we are not so keen on doing exercises we either eat first of all we eat heavy meal which is very high in oil very heavy on dairy paneer and ghee all these products are very high in saturated fats and when you don't uh, exercise that all the what Dr. Vanita has mentioned uh, that insulin resistance is caused by a diet which is very high in saturated fats which leads to diabetes and this is the reason why we are seeing disturbing trends for being overweight obesity diabetes in India then uh, this slide shows that how our evolution has taken place and has evolved over the last uh, uh, several years and you can see that we were a lean person and now thanks to our sedentary lifestyle and the way we are eating dairy and meat and processed foods the, uh, the picture on the on the right shows that this is the way we have evolved and our diet again people in india somehow they love we have a very big sweet tooth and i always mention in my presentations that we love our sweets we love samosas we love uh, fried chicken we love pizzas uh, fully um, um, fully laden with the uh, cheese which is actually 60 uh, percent calories come from saturated fats so th this if this this kind of diet is uh, is a part of a everyday meal and the social and the social life we we live in where every everybody invites everybody whether it's wedding or it's a birthday party food is the main part of our society and it's not something that we we, we cherish to feed people more when we invite somebody we say come on let's have some more and when this kind of food is going in our system definitely it's going to cause problems because it's very high in fats and uh, and very high or even in cholesterol because most of these foods are animal based products so when we are eating uh, food and when we are eating this kind of food this is the type of food we should be eating chapatis grains this is great 100% whole wheat skipping the maida completely and just having 
100% whole wheat flour that would be really great all kinds of vegetables our lentils we have a variety of lentils and vegetables and if we can skip the oil in most of these uh, uh, foods we are eating we would be good to go so uh, if you eat this kind of food and you take a blood sample out and you let it sit for a few minutes you can see that there will be a clear serum at the top and this is the what this is what we want in our food but if you eat a food which is very high in animal based products you can see that the, if you isolate the blood and you let it sit the, 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 the serum which comes at the top is not clear anymore and this is called postprandial lipemia where there are a lot of lipids and, and, and a lot of fats in our diet and this takes a lot of time for our liver to clear it out. But by the time our liver has cleared out the, this uh, lipids in the blood, we are ready with another meal. So this kind of things are happening continuously in our diet and we are eating a lot but we are not burning enough calories and eating wrong kind of food. So we, uh, if we really want to reverse the chronic conditions in India, I would say the best thing to do is that we switch back to our traditional Indian diet uh, and skipping dairy and animal products and just eating our, our regular diet with lentils and vegetables and all kinds of fruits as Vanita mentioned. This is a season of mangoes and if you can manage your diabetes by avoiding all the fats you, you will be surprised to eat all different kinds of mangoes and uh, your blood sugar level will not rise because now you have tackled the root cause of diabetes that you have uh, tackled insulin resistance in your cells and once you have removed all those that uh, uh, lipid particles in your cell then your cells are more uh, uh, sensitive to the insulin function and your pancreas is make, making insulin and now insulin is able to do its function so you will be able to enjoy all these foods uh, mangoes and everything and all kinds of uh, guavas for example she mentioned uh, so my, my two cents here is that switching to a plant-based diet would make us uh, healthy and again some exercises especially during this COVID-19 pandemic uh, these foods also boost uh, your uh, uh, immunity so uh, and i would say if there is a super pill which is available right now to cure all these uh, problems with chronic diseases it's the uh, plant-based diet and with that i would like to stop here because there is a lot to share about our work in india with you and uh, we can uh, share it uh, if you uh, have questions I can answer that or if you want us to share our work in India we can share some some slides with you about our recent work in India when Dr. Rahman and I we went to several cities in India in several medical colleges and we gave talks and we are um, getting a great uh, response from India because people are understanding that the research shows that if we practice preventive medicine with plant-based nutrition we can solve so many lifestyle disorders uh, which we are dealing with in our country so with that i will st uh, stop sharing my uh, presentation here so dr Back. zishan it'll be, it'll be lovely to hear about your work in india so if you want to continue and share some of that that'll be great and we can take the questions right after that all right so uh uh as uh, you uh, uh, hemendra you mentioned that i have joined pcrm in the year 2012 I was doing my postdoc in in Italy and after that I joined PCRM and my uh, the reason why I joined PCRM was for the ethical side because I was doing research on animals and I was never happy to do experiments on mice and when I learned about PCRM I said that that's great that's the organization I would like to work with uh, with ethical research so that's another side of our organization and this is the main reason I working for PCRM and now my focus is on the nutrition side because when I learned about that Dr. Neil Bernard has a program where he was traveling to India and 
promoting his work in India and I thought hey I'm interested in this and he said yeah you you take over so here I am and now going to India after every three four months and collaborating with the uh, medical schools and with plant-based chefs and non-profit organizations and institutions and uh, I think uh, over the last several years I have given 75 to 80 lectures in India and we are getting a, a very good response and I think the part of the reason why we are getting our a good response from India is that we have a very good network and people are very uh, supportive and and very helpful when we are planning these lectures for example um, just with just be cafe I think we are very thankful to you for partnering with us to do a physician's event where we can prepare the, the physicians so that they have the right tools uh, to practice preventive medicine and our organization as you all know that we also do clinical research at, uh, at the physicians committee so uh, when we do the clinical research we publish them in peer-reviewed journals and we take the clinical research we break into easy to easy to understand language for public and professionals so that they can take the latest research on plant-based nutrition and try to help communities and patients and people. So our work in India, which started actually with having uh, public lectures where we organized several public lectures with several wonderful people like Dr. Nandita Shah of Sharan, Dr. Pramod Tripathi from Freedom of Diabetes. We have great collaboration in Chennai with some yoga studios. We have amazing network of chefs. Uh, and I would mention we have collaborated with uh, Bhavna Kapoor in Mumbai, Kanika Kohli in Delhi, and um, there are many more. So uh, uh, I think this network and this collaboration has uh, given us uh, the right uh, ground to spread our work in India. So we are very thankful to that. So let me share uh, some some pictures from our latest uh, latest talk in India which was in Shangri-La and you will be seeing a picture here just give me a second share the screen so if you can see that this is the picture for, uh, from Shangri-La where we invited uh, physicians and this was our free event where our organization provided free food and free resources for public and everything was for PCRM. And let me share another picture here. Uh, this is uh, 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 me and Dr. Rahman with Dr. Bhujan Shetty and Dr. Bhujan Shetty, people in Bangalore would know that he's a, such a great person who is the founder of Naran and Netrale Foundation and we collaborated with him and he, he gave a small talk and he, he has uh, actually reversed his conditions just by following a plant-based diet and we uh, we introduced this nutrition guide for clinicians which is our um, which is a free app uh, and it's a complete encyclopedia of different diseases conditions and how you can handle them keeping nutrition as first in line it also gives you about how to about the the references and about the treatment options and diagnosis but the main part which you don't find in most of the uh, manuals is how how to tackle those conditions with proper nutrition and this gives a detail on over 100 diseases and it's really a great tool i will encourage people even for lay people, I mean, it's a great tool, but mostly for clinicians, healthcare professionals to download this free app and make a good use of it. We have over a millions of downloads and just last year itself, we had over 100,000 downloads of this app. So this is a really a great free tool for you to, to use it in your practice. And I uh, uh, would also like to mention that uh, with the, these free public lectures, uh, we, what, what we have done over several years, now we are focusing on medical schools in India. And you might have seen that over the last few years, uh, we are going and collaborating with uh, at least 10 or 12 
medical schools spread across different uh, different parts in india and getting such a great response from the next generation of physicians because they are learning about the new tools the latest research on plant based nutrition and uh, which they are not taught in their school and very similar to usa that they will their their curriculum is designed so they are still learning about those communicable diseases which have totally been out of we, we don't see them too much they are not being taught about chronic diseases even if they are taught they are taught how to write a prescription and dr rahman is here with me and she would agree that most of the time medical schools don't teach them how to practice preventive medicine so we are bringing the latest research to medical schools what we are also doing is that every time we do a a, a lecture there we also uh, introduce them to plant based diet so we collaborate with local chefs who can prepare plant based meals and let them taste because once they hear the science and even taste the food and if, and if it is tasty then they would love it if they would love it then only they would prescribe it to their patients so we are uh, doing this approach where we where we uh, introduce them to this kind of diet but also let them try it so this is really working well and uh, this uh, uh, i would say that this work is not only happening in india but my colleague uh, ja ju is also promoting this work in china and we are also doing this work in uh in uh, in the united states so i had the the medical student nutrition education program in the united states and we are reaching to different medical schools where we are even uh organizing free lunch and learns for students so the physicians committee sponsors those lunch and learns for medical students where we send experts where we have over 12000 physician members associated with our organization and we identify the the expert in their who is very close to their medical school and then we send them there and uh, we send the literature and resource packets for them so that they can learn they can read about things and uh, we are also getting a great response there so our idea is to spread the word and to change the nutrition education curriculum in schools and let them have if they are not being taught in the school then the physicians committee is taking the responsibility of bringing that education to the school all all by itself by just sheer collaboration with uh, members and with the schools so with that i would like to stop i think i've done too much talking and maybe vanita has to add something or even I mean that you want to have a few questions or something uh, uh please uh, let me know so thank you so much for all this information and all most importantly all the work that you you and PCRM does uh, the proof is in the pudding as they say you know so taking the pudding to the to the students i I've, i've had a a case of a, of a friend coming to just be and you know saying that if this is the kind of a doctor friend coming to just be and saying this is a kind of food then of course the whole world should be eating it and getting healthier so that's i think in my opinion too is the right approach and more power to everyone involved in this yeah that's true i mean yeah. and uh, i think what uh, i i'm very happy because this time i i collaborated but i asked one uh, dr rahman that uh, you know i go to india for these lectures and uh, do you think you have Uh, your availability because she is very busy seeing patients at bernard medical center yeah. so i um, i asked her to reserve uh, give me two weeks of a time and that really worked well and we went to this uh, this, uh, this uh, tour it was amazing uh, although we couldn't enjoy to the the tour by going for doing for some sightseeing but uh, i think that's the case whenever we come to india we have such a busy schedule and, and so many colleges to visit uh, to give lectures but i'm happy this is growing because in the year 2018 uh, we have gone with dr james lumis who is the medical director at bernard medical center uh, people would remember him and we had a great time yes he was in the game changers i remember that's true yeah 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 what <laughs> yeah. yes. a few you have been to just be uh, when pcrm conducted an event in bangalore earlier 
this year you mentioned this in the talk what was your experience here and how do you envision the future of just be and other plant based eateries to start with because it all starts with food and there's so much emphasis on it so I'd like to hear from you both of you dr vanita would you like to go first sure you know first of all let me let me also echo what zishan said thank you and nidhi so much for having us at just be it i grew up in bangalore and and to go back there and to go to a all plant based oil free restaurant to me was really just exceptionally wonderful and it was such a special treat and you were so welcoming and the food was amazing and I, let me also just say something that in india a lot of people are vegetarian and so when they hear plant based they think oh i don't really need to change anything i'm already plant based i'm vegetarian but let's be very clear about this there's a difference between vegetarian and plant based vegetarians will include dairy products and um eggs in them in india most vegetarians are not including eggs but they do include dairy products such as milk or cheese or yogurt and it's a big part of the diet it's in almost every meal so even if someone is vegetarian it's great that they're not eating poultry and seafood and meat but they're still consuming these high fat high cholesterol dairy products and as i showed you that really impacts our blood sugar levels it raises our blood pressure it raises our cholesterol so we need to go a step further and and reduce those from our diet or just cut them out altogether and there's a world of uh, vegan substitutes like almond milk or cashew milk or soy milk and even yogurts and um the other thing let me also say about vegetarians in india is even if they're not consuming dairy the diet is really high in oil um whether it's fried food or oil laden food and then and of course there's ghee um so we really do need to cut that out it's not enough to just be vegetarian to be healthy and one of the things that i loved at the food uh, about the food at just be was that there was no oil and it was so delicious and and the way you created all sorts of things so it really goes to show that we don't need oil and dairy and i think places like just be are going to play a greater and greater role I travel a lot and everywhere I go I'm seeing vegan cafes popping up even places like Switzerland which once you couldn't think of finding a vegetarian let alone a vegan restaurant now they're popping up everywhere there's a big movement the shelves are stocked with vegan products and I think it really speaks to the fact that people know diet is important they know they need to change their diet and and they're really hungry for change and I'm so glad that just be there and I hope there are more and more places like that to help people transform their lives. Sure. Dr. Zishan, do you remember anything of the dinner that we had at just be? Stop asking me, man. Talk to me. I can I can continue for uh, for hours. <laughs> it was such a great experience. First of all, the uh, the food was like amazing and the presentation and as I already mentioned, the presentation was really amazing and we loved it and and i think uh, even the the company was great nidhi is such a great person and her husband and you and the staff we were able to meet the staff who were making such a wonderful food and him and he was such a low key person it was always uh, good to we were in touch but good to see you face to face when we were in india and then, also i would say that say rahim i said dr bhujan shetty was also there and the vision shady was also part of it that's true yeah that's true it was great so then i think uh, what happened is that uh, uh, my relationship with just be and with nidhi it was not just of now it had i think several years back when i think it was in 2013 or 2014 when i uh, when i was giving lectures in bangalore we we did an event together and i think if i remember correctly nidhi prepared this millet uh, milk and it was so delicious and when i tasted it i just after my lecture i kept drinking after every few minutes so that was the first time i collaborated with uh, nidhi and it was uh, a great collaboration and we thought uh, we could do it again and this time when we were planning this uh, shangri la event for the physicians outreach and it all worked so well and your uh, just we cafe promoted so well and i think i'm very thankful to you that if it was not you we would have never collaborated with dr bhujang shetty and we would have never known about him actually so this was 
really great. And this happens when we are doing these collaborations in India and you know somebody and then they know somebody and that way you bring the right people uh, for the right cause. And this has really helped how, uh, for our work to grow in India. And I'm very thankful to that. So again, we are looking forward for the next uh, series of events in India. And as soon as uh, COVID-19 gives us some relief, we would love to come to Just Be Cafe again and organize few public and uh, professional events uh, for people in India. Right. Even for us uh, to to collaborate with PCRM is is when we when Nidhi got to know that you know we are uh, you know we are in talks with PCRM to to collaborate and you know um, help in whatever small way we can for the event. She was excited and all the staff because I mean it, I think as you said you've been you have been in touch with Nidhi from from before just we started. So PCRM is something we look up to and the and the media and the material that is produced is consumed by all of us, you know, in, in, in the way of information. So for us, you know, we, we still pinch ourselves, you know, that, that do we do we really get to work with PCRM? But yes, we do. So that's we 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 try to do whatever little we can to to strengthen the movement and see you know see that it grows stronger. So yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. We need supporters like you to spread our word. We are always there, and as I said, we 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 do everything you know to take the movement forward. Yeah. Sure. So, Dr. Zishan, just one uh, uh, last thing. We'd like to know what are the steps and measures taken by PCRM to enroll doctors into learning about nutrition and the benefits of whole food, plant-based diet. You described a lot, but if somebody now watches this. Uh, session, the video, and then wants to know more. Where do they go? How do they approach you? Uh, they or their organization? How do they start working with you? Awesome. That's that's a very good question. And uh, we have a dedicated page uh, for people in India, especially if they are just the. Let's say we have a page for the public, pcrm. dot org forward slash India. Again, there's www.pcrm.org forward slash India, and we have resources dedicated for people in India. Then we have resources just for the physicians, and we have a like if you if they want to learn about what is new in the plant-based world, you can go to again our website pcrm.org, and you go for for physicians. There is a tab uh, on the website, and you can find the latest research about plant-based diet uh, and what tools they can use for their patients. And we also have waiting room materials. And for India, in India, they can contact me and I can share the, the, the fact sheets that they can download because I know that we, can, we will not be able to ship them to India, but physicians can uh, contact me at zali at pcrm.org Again, that's Z for zebra, A for apple, L for Larry, I for India at pcrm.org. And then I can send them the downloadable uh, resources which they can put in their waiting room uh, area for the patients. So uh, again, um, also there are resources. For example, I mentioned that nutrition guide for clinicians. It's a great app. And if you register on that, then you will be automatically entered into our database and whenever there is uh, some information about PCRM's work in India, they will be notified. And another resource which could be very useful for healthcare professionals, for researchers, for physicians, for medical students is to sign up for breaking medical news. So this is something where whenever there is a latest research on plant-based nutrition, we send, we send out an email to all our, to all the people who have signed up for uh, this uh, breaking medical news uh, newsletter and you will be uh, learning about the latest research uh, another way to uh, get in touch with us is by uh, uh, for example filling out a form there is a form to contact us and then our nutrition team will if it is from india the, the request would come to me and then i can uh, answer and we are very quick in responding so anytime there is a question we are very sincere in uh, reaching out to people who contact us 
so we would be very uh, you would you would hear very quickly from me so and uh, also the physicians we are encouraging them that please uh, visit our website download the materials and start practicing preventive medicine and if there are any questions our team of physicians dietitians and uh, other researchers would be very happy to to work with you or to help you or to provide the materials you need uh, in your practice Sure, that'll be great. So, anyone listening to it who needs assistance in getting in touch can use those resources. Thank you so much, you know, for 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 the time that you've taken out. I know that PCRM is in overdrive because of COVID nineteen. There's so much work that I see, you know, the media coming out of PCRM. Yep. Thank you so much for to you and Dr. Vanita for taking the time out. And no. once the pandemic subsides, we would. The next thing we would like to hear is you are coming to Bangalore and you know coming to Just Be. So that'll be great. Course, yeah. Now we yeah. have, some, yeah, we have an amazing network. Now you have connected us with Naran and Ethrale. You have Just Be there. We have worked with Manipal hospitals in Bangalore, and we have a uh, 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 few more uh, collaborators and supporters. So I think we would love to come there and even the medical school, the Bangalore uh, Medical College. Yes. we have a good relationship with them so we would love to come there and maybe do events just in bangalore itself but if we do do it in bangalore itself we might easily uh, you know for one week will will also be less to spread the word right and even if it's not to 2020 hopefully it's early 2021 um, and hope to see yeah. you here of course yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you so, so much again and take care see you again of course bye -bye. thank you so much bye